and welcome to another virtual story time with me, Miss Erin, at the Saranac Clarksville District Library. So today, hmm, I wonder what we're reading about. Do you want to see the books? Okay. So we're reading this book. Huh. We're reading this book. On the front it says, my toothbrush is missing. And we're reading this book, which is called Alan's Big Scary Teeth. So what do all these three books have in common? You're right, we are reading about teeth. Teeth today. We're going to read, we're going to sing, we might even brush some teeth today. All right, so before we start reading and rhyming and singing about teeth, let's do our song, all right? So if you want to read a book, clap your hands. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. If you want to read a book, sit down and take a look. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you want to read a book, sit down and take a look. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. Stomp. If you want to read a book, sit and go, shh. If you want to read a book, sit and go, shh. If you want to read a book, sit down and take a look. If you want to read a book, say, shh. Okay. So our first book today is some of the more interesting pages from what if you had animal teeth? What if you had animal teeth? By Susan Markle. Ugh. What if, what if you had animal teeth? Hmm. So, so you've lost your front teeth before you know it two new ones will push right into their space. But what if an animal's teeth grew in instead? Hmm, <gasps> let's see what animal's teeth could grow in there. <gasps> A beaver's teeth. If you had beaver teeth, your front teeth would never stop growing. <gasps> You could gnaw through all the tough stuff you like, day after day, for all of your life. Wow. Because what do beavers eat? What do they gnaw at? That's true. They cut down trees with their teeth. What is that? Beaver teeth. Hmm. I wonder what other animal's teeth could grow into our mouth. What about an elephant's teeth? Oh, look at that. What if you had elephant teeth? Oh, so an elephant's front teeth are called tusks. And a male's elephant's tusks grow between five and seven inches each year. The longest elephant tusk, it was 11 feet long. That's like as long as your car. Wow. So if you had elephant tusks as your front teeth, they would be super strong and you could easily lift and move your bed or even the family car. Oh, whoa. Huh, those elephant tusks. That would be crazy. All right, let's do a couple more. Ooh, this is exciting. So what if you had tiger teeth? 
tiger teeth. <gasps> Look at Hellboy has tiger teeth. So if you had tiger teeth, <gasps> there, you had four sharp fangs. <gasps> Perfect for eating meat because that's what tigers eat. And they're super strong too. Oh my goodness. What does it say? So if you had Bengal tiger front teeth, they'd be strong. You could bite and hold tight while dragging something five times your weight. So that would be like if you were dragging your mom and your dad with your teeth. Whoa. Those are pretty strong teeth. I think with your human teeth, though, you shouldn't try any of this stuff in this book. Not unless you had animal teeth for real, not just for pretend. <sighs> that was a lot. Good animal teeth. So you know what the book says, though? Look at all these guys with their animal teeth. It says animal teeth could be cool for a while, but you don't use your front teeth to cut down trees or scare off enemies. You don't need them to dig tunnels or bite really tough stuff. And you never lift the family car with your teeth, even for fun. So what kind of front teeth are right for you? Hmm. Look at, luckily you don't have to choose. The teeth that replace those you lost will be people teeth. And they'll be exactly what you need to bite apples, carrots, and corn on the cob. Just what you need to help you talk. And best of all, the best kind to show off your smiles. Can you guys all smile for Miss Erin? Oh, what beautiful teeth you all have. So the end of what if you had animal teeth <gasps> wow you know i'm glad i have human teeth i don't know if i'm if i'm ready to have any of those animal teeth i think it might be cool for a little while but i think i'd want to get back to the teeth i already have All right, well, you know what? You know what grows on teeth if we don't brush them? Germs and it's called plaque and tartar. I know those are big words, but germs grow on teeth. So let's do a little flannel board about germs. So we're gonna do a felt and it's called Five Little Germs. And look, it has a hand, right? Because we get germs on our hands. So it's gonna, it's called Five Little Germs and we're gonna be counting, okay. So five little germs sitting in a row. The first one said, on hands I like to grow. The second one said, I like to fly in the air. The third one said, I don't care. The fourth one said, I travel on a sneeze. Oh, so what's the right way to sneeze? When you sneeze, you sneeze into your elbow, right? Mm-hmm. And the fifth one said, wash your hands. Oh, please. So how many germs are there? One, two, three, four, five. So swish goes the water, the soap, bubble goes the soap. Oh, okay, are we washing? Wash, and wash all those germs off our hands. And the five little germs, down the, oops, <laughs> down the drain they float. <sighs> yeah, because hand washing is pretty important to get rid of the germs, just as important as Brushing your teeth are. Wow, you guys counted really good for that flannel board. All those germs, they're gross. I wash my hands a lot because I see a lot of people throughout the day. 
And it's especially important to wash your hands so you don't get sick. Washing your hands, brushing your teeth, and just keeping, you know, pretty clean in general is very important for staying healthy. So one of the ways that we clean our teeth is with a toothbrush. And this book is about a toothbrush. But our friend's toothbrush is missing. So it's called My Toothbrush is Missing by Jan Thomas. My Toothbrush is Missing by Jan Thomas. My Toothbrush is Missing. Oh no. We need our toothbrushes. Toothbrushes? Well, we need to brush our teeth regardless. Toothbrush and toothpaste. Uh-oh. My toothbrush is missing. My toothbrush is missing. Oh no. Well, what does a toothbrush look like? Hmm. Well, you know, it has bristles. Bristles? Weird. I, I feel like I've seen it. Hmm. Wonder if he has. I know. Come this way. Here, here is your toothbrush. I don't see a toothbrush. What is that supposed to? That's not a tooth. What is that? What kind of animal is that? That's not a toothbrush. That is not my toothbrush. That is a fat cat. Oh no. Are you sure? Those whiskers look pretty bristly. Yes, I am sure. That is not a toothbrush. My toothbrush also has a long handle. A long handle? Weird. I feel like I've seen it. Hmm. Hmm. I know. Come this way. Here is your toothbrush. Wait, do you see a toothbrush on this page? What is that? That's not a toothbrush. That is not my toothbrush. That is a broom. So you're saying that is not your toothbrush. Yes! He doesn't look very happy. Maybe a giant could use it as a toothbrush, though. Do you think a giant could use a broom as a toothbrush? Maybe. My toothbrush is much smaller and has a red handle. Red. Weird. Hmm. I know. Hmm. Do you think he's going to come back with his toothbrush? Here is your toothbrush. Do you guys see a toothbrush? What is that? You guys might not know what that is. It's for cooking. But that is really not my toothbrush. 
it is an egg beater. It's for making eggs. You scramble them. I know. Oh, well, I give up. I've spent long enough looking for your toothbrush. Okay, thanks for your help, donkey. You think dog's ever going to find his toothbrush? I need to get back to scrubbing my hooves. Wait, do you guys see a toothbrush on this page? Right there. It's such, oh, oh no. The duck says quack. That's what ducks say. Oh no, dog says weird. My scrubber has dog's name on it. That's not weird. That's my toothbrush. Oh, I think you need a new toothbrush. And the duck says quack, because that's what ducks say. The end. Oh no. Well, at least he found his toothbrush. <laughs> so, my toothbrush is missing by Jan Thomas. Well, I'm glad Doc finally found his toothbrush, but I think he better get a new one as well. Oof, that was icky. So icky. All right, well, Miss Erin has her toothbrush. And so let's brush some teeth. We'll brush some germs away and then we can practice our counting while we're brushing. So here's my big smile, but oh no, look at all those little germs in there. Can we count how many germs there are? Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten little germs. <gasps> but you know what? Luckily, I brought my toothbrush. It's green. My toothbrush is green. <sighs> let's use it to, to brush away some of these germs. So let's see here. What color should we brush? away first. Green like my toothbrush? All right, so let's see here. Let's brush this one away. Oh, toothbrush. Perfect. Let's see. Oh, there's another one. All right. So how many germs are there now? There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, that's still too many for me, for my mouth. Let's see, what color now? Blue? All right, oh, there's a blue one right here. All right, and there's a blue one right here. All right, so how many germs are there now? Hmm. One, Two, three, four, five, six. I think that's still too many. So what color germ should we do next? Orange. Orange is good. Orange would be good. Okay. So let's brush these orange guys out of here. Oh. Perfect. You guys are such a helper. Okay. Oh, there's still some germs. How many more germs do I have left to brush? Do I have left to brush? Let's see. One, two, three, four more germs. So let's see, let's do the pink germs because that's Miss Erin's favorite color. Right. Oh, gotta get all those germies. Gotta brush them. I brush, I brush, I brush the teeth. Okay, that's looking pretty good. But I think we still have a little bit more. I see some germs left. How many? Let's count them. There are 
one, two germs left. <gasps> Should we brush them? Okay. Let's see, there's this guy here, and then, oh, way in the back, there's one. Let's brush him away. Oh. And then we'll do a once over just to make sure. Brush, 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 brush. There, all clean. We got it in the back, we got in the front. Brush your teeth. All right, so I'm gonna put my toothbrush right here so I don't lose mine. And then, We'll get back to reading books. Let's read a book about big, scary teeth. Not like my teeth, which are just big, not so scary. Thanks for helping me, Miss Erin, get all those germs off my teeth. Hmm, that toothbrush was pretty big, but it was good for the job I needed to do of getting all those germs. All right, so let's read one last book together. So this one, also about teeth, but it's about, I think it's a crocodile named Alan, and Alan's Big Scary Teeth by Jarvis. Alan's Big Scary Teeth by Jarvis. Ooh, does Alan look scary to you? A little bit. Okay. Let's see here. Ooh, it's a big book. Alan's Big Scary Teeth. You know, I don't think Miss Erin can be on the same camera as this book. So I'm going to move out of the way so you guys can see the pages better. All right, so I'm going to, here we go. Alan's Big Scary Teeth. Alan came from a long line of scary alligators. He was known throughout the jungle for his scaring. It was what he did best. Alan would start each day polishing his scales, sharpening his nails, and brushing each of his big scary teeth for at least 10 minutes. Oop, there he is brushing his teeth. And after practicing his frightening faces in the mirror, he's practicing his he would sneak into the jungle for his morning round of scaring. Alan went snap, snap. And grr, grr. he said things like, I'm Big Scary Alan. Fear my razor sharp teeth. Ah. He made the frogs leap off their lily pads and the monkeys tumble from the trees. And the parrots screech in terrible terror. <gasps> Grr, snap, snap. Eek, ah, look at everybody running. Oh, no. <sighs> bah, ha, ha, I love being scary, said Alan. Hmm. After a long day of scaring the jungle animals, Alan would head back home to the swamp, relax, finish the crossword in the Jungle Times, and take out his false teeth. Nobody knew about Alan's false teeth. What? Good night, teeth. Sweet dreams, my scary snappers, Alan would say as he put them away carefully in his super secret hiding place. But, but then, one morning, Barry the beaver was up early collecting wood 
and came across a dozing Alan. <gasps> Terrified that Alan might wake up and gobble him whole, he quickly dived behind a bush. <gasps> Whew, that was close, thought Barry. Just as a set of false teeth fell out of a bush with a very familiar snap, snap. When Alan awoke, his teeth were gone. My teeth, my teeth, where are my teeth? But what could he do? Maybe no one would notice. Could he still be scary without them? He decided to head into the jungle as usual. He made the frogs leap on their lily pads, the monkeys tumble from the trees, and the parrots screech. With laughter, oh no, Alan just wasn't very scary without his teeth. Oh no, I'm going to be laughing. <laughs> Alan slunk back to the swamp. He had never been more embarrassed. He came from a long line of very scary alligators. Scary was all he had ever known. What would Alan do now? Hmm, what could Alan do? So poor Alan began to cry. But then, oh, just a little bit at first. But then the tears kept coming. He howled and yelled more than all the jungle babies put together. And he could not stop crying. There he is. Until, hmm. The next morning, when all the animals turned up at Alan's swamp with his big scary teeth. We'll give you back your teeth said Frog. Oh, what is he? He has drools, it says. Wheelie, said Alan, on one condition, said Parrot. You have to stop scaring us. But what will I do? I don't know how to do anything else. Well, we have an idea, said Frog. I wonder what Frog's idea was. And so every day, after polishing his scales, sharpening his nails, and brushing his big, scary teeth, Alan headed into the jungle and became Alan the gardener. Look, he's cutting the trees with his teeth. Alan the hairdresser. Look, he's cutting hair with his teeth. And Alan, the dentist, he's brushing frog's teeth. Hmm. But every night, he became Alan, the big scary storyteller, thrilling the jungle animals with his terrifying tales. Bwahaha, <gasps> I love being scary said Alan. Hmm. And sometimes he even let Barry borrow his teeth. Oh, and he says, Grr! She has a pretty big teeth for a beaver. The end. Oh, here I'm back. That was such a good story about how, you know, you shouldn't be scary. And you should brush your teeth. Two things. So that was Alan's Big Scary Teeth by Jarvis. Wow, Alan did have some big scary teeth for an alligator, but I suppose, I suppose that's really an alligator's job is to be kind of scary. But I'm glad he made friends at the end. Okay, well that was the last book and now we have one more little rhyme before we head to our craft, 
So for this one, Miss Erin made this, it's called a story time glove. She's really excited about it. All right, and it's about teeth. You know, let me scoot closer so you guys can all see. And it's counting, because how many teeth do I have right there? One, two, three, four, five teeth. So it goes, there were five little teeth in my teeny tiny mouth. I pulled and I twisted. Oh, wait, oh, and one popped out. Now there are one, two, three, four. Four little teeth in my teeny tiny mouth. I pulled and I twisted and one popped out. So how many are there now? Three. One, two, three. There's three little teeth in my teeny tiny mouth. I pulled and I twisted. Boop. And one popped out. Now there are two. One, two. Two little teeth in my teeny tiny mouth. I pulled and I twisted up, and one popped out. Now, how many teeth are there? I miss Aaron's glove. One, one little tooth in my teeny tiny mouth. I pulled and I twisted and it popped out. Now there are zero. There are no teeth in my teeny tiny mouth. But luckily there are a bunch because I already lost all my baby teeth. But you know what? You guys are probably gonna lose a bunch of teeth and then grow brand new big ones in. So we're gonna make little tooth fairy bags today. So it's felt and you can put your teeth in it. And then you know what? Your mom and dad, know to call the tooth fairy and tell her to come and get your teeth. So it's great. And it's right, you put it right on the outside of your door to hang it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So let's go make one of those. So our craft today is tooth fairy bags. So in your bag, you should have, let me see your hands, your tooth and as a string to hang it from your doorknob of your bedroom. And there's a hole in there. It's a bag it's for you to put your teeth in when they fall out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna decorate it. So first, let's put this red piece on here. So the red piece, you gotta peel it back because it's a sticker. Put that right in the middle. What does that look like? Hmm. Let's see. It does. It looks like a smile. It's a mouth. So now we take the eyeballs and you gotta peel them back because they're sticky too. And put that one right there. And then one more eyeball because we have two eyeballs. So you go. One, two eyeballs. See, they're googly. Ah, okay. And then we have trash out of the way. We have these two things. What could those be? They're teeth. So they're also stickers. So let's take the backs off. You might need to get an adult to help you. And we're going to put our teeth on there. Oh my goodness. Oh, here we go. Put two teeth. One, two teeth. And there you go. Look at all those goofy. So there's my tooth fairy bag where I can put my teeth inside and hang it from my doorknob for the tooth fairy. Perfect. Well, thanks for coming to story time and craft time with me, Miss Erin at the Serenette Clarksville District Library. I get so excited that we spend this time together and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye. Okay.